Marawi, does Marawi change anything in Mindanao in, in, in the dynamics of the peace process? Mm, definitely. Uh, for one thing, uh, it shows how serious the problem of radicalization is in the area and how uh, lacking the government has been in providing a comprehensive response. And I'm talking about not military response, but a more cohesive and nuanced approach to all of these developments that have been taking place. <clears throat> Secondly, it also shows how important it is to really um, complete the process, you know, with the more Islamic Liberation Front, which has been holding, uh, hold, holding the fort, staying the course of peace all throughout the delays that they have encountered since the signing of the Comprehensive Agreement on the Bank Samoa. Assuming that, that this is on its way or even near to being quelled, mm -hmm. what are some opportunities for government moving forward? Well, first, it will have to secure the gains of that process with the MILF as well as with the MNLF, given that uh, most of the MNLF in any case, are on board this uh, Bangsamoro process. And once that done, that's done, then you stabilize the situation, so at, at least in the areas where you have significant MILF presence. And you can count on the MILF to be a partner, both in economic development and in uh, security, as well as in all of the social, the social component mm -hmm. of this radicalization uh, um, process that has been going on. You, you talk more about this, uh, I mean, not necessarily to zero in on Mautes as, as a clan, but talk more about this kinship dynamic that, you're, that you say is important to understand. I think it happens everywhere. Well, that's, that's how it is. You don't necessarily um, support uh, what uh, these young people are doing, but at the same time, uh, you cannot close the door on them. So I think what's really important is to prevent that kind of um, conversion in the thinking of the young people in these communities. And it's very good to see that actually there have been recent interventions along that line, seminars among the young people uh, getting together with the ulamas and uh, making them agents or um, channels to preach a very peaceful, uh, moderate brand of Islam. So. So all of these things will really have to be uh, in intensified in order to, to, um, to not allow uh, a, more, a violent, a virulent type of um, Islamist movement to take its roots. There was an article that came out on Interaction uh, today, written by Irie Ching. Uh, I thought the perspective was, was interesting and important to, to share. And basically, she was reflecting on on uh, how this whole incident in Marawi obviously brings out sympathy and empathy for the people of Marawi, even the people of Mindanao, but it also polarized everyone in terms of martial law. One of the things that I got out of that piece was she was saying, one of the ways to reconcile all our perspectives is not to try to reconcile mm -hmm. everything into one monolithic sense of history. You've been involved obviously for a long time in the peace process. How valid is that sentiment and that reminder? It's true. Uh, there will be people in Mindanao who support, don't support martial law. There will be Maranaos, and I'm reading some of them, who support and who don't support martial law. There can never be 100% uh, agreement on uh, certain policies, except probably on some very basic thing, which is like the being able to address effectively the humanitarian disaster that has happened in Marawi. It's because at the end of the day, what unites all of us is our humanity. Yeah. So I think there are certain core issues where we will find easier agreement on, but a lot of political issues with our perspectives can go all in different ways. Okay.